We got a great show for you today. Semifinal matchups on the horizon. We get you ready as we break down each and every game this week. I've got a big one with Papa Josh coming up. In fact, there was a player sitting right over here that I had to rip off the wall because, well, Papa Josh has him on the roster. So don't miss a minute of today's show. We get you set to win a title. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Alvin Kamara. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I don't remember those lyrics. I'm sorry. I, uh, it's not might officially have, approved. Might have something at stake tonight, Mike. But it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> Felt pretty good. <laughs> Um, welcome in one and all the fantasy footballers podcast. Oh boy. Here we go. Semi-final week. We're going to get you prepared, ready to rumble. And we, well, I can say I am in the thick of it. You, yeah. You are <laughs> full backyard against. I am. I've got some starts at decisions for this big matchup with Papa Josh, who, um, Look, Papa Josh is going hard in the paint when it comes to the troll fest. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me tell you a story about what I discovered last night. We had a late night. Uh, Mike, you said you had a late night. I did. It, you know, at our age, it's just really not something you should be doing. But we were watching a, a show, a finale. It went late into the night. My wife, she went to bed. Was, I was this a Survivor? It was Survivor, yeah. It was the finale. It was. Ooh. Yeah, it was the finale last night. So we were watching that, and it's a, it's long. It's like three hours. Man, no spoilers. Uh, I won't. I won't. You I would never up, do that. You will upset dozens of people. Dozens <laughs> of people would be upset. Dozens of old people. <laughs> you know, this is not the point. <laughs> it was not the point of the story. My wife went to bed, and uh, so the room was dark. And um, I had cleaned up out front, and she was already, like, asleep. And so I just sneak into bed, and I lay my head up on the pillow. And upon the pillow, I noticed the, the rustling of paper, right? Mm. And I pull the paper off, of it, and, what? and what do I see? I see DJ Moore's freaking <laughs> uh, picture of DJ Moore on my pillow. When did that get placed there? Which means that Papa Josh is now using my wife against me. Okay, <laughs> that was the question. And then I try to roll over, and there's Justin Fields. <laughs> Justin Fields, and the, I have to turn on my flashlight on my phone. Then I get in today, and I've got a little present. You know, everyone likes presents well, around Christmas hold, time. Hold on. I feel yeah, like, go ahead. I mean, this is the, the, the bubble has been broken here. <laughs> You're putting stuff into a, a man's bed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's like a horse head <laughs> this situation. <laughs> this is, I mean, that's, that's inappropriate. This is awesome. I, guys, I have to beat him. I have to win. And then I get in this morning, I got a package from Santa. A nice wrapped gift. Yeah. A wrapped gift. And I open it up, and those on YouTube can see it. It's a nice little book by uh, Martha Hickman. Oh, yeah, Martha. It's called Healing After Loss. Mm. Daily Meditations for Working Through Grief. Now, you also came well, I got a whole in, year oh, of, of readings in case. Goodness gracious. You also came. It, 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 first of all. His team name is Grumpy Old Trolls. I mean, he yeah. is a troll of trolls, but you try. He even looks like one. To, he does look like a grumpy yeah. old troll. Um, Under the bridge. <laughs> you came in with your own gift for him, right? Well, he li he, he likes games. Yeah, he likes puzzles. Mm -hmm. so, so I made him a little crossword puzzle. <laughs> Let me just say this, and I want to make this very, very clear. I know Papa Josh is, is listening as well, and this is to you two fellas. With the amount of hoopla and trolling and effort and energy one of you two better win the championship next week if both of you lose if the winner of this match just goes on to lose next week you're out the league yeah you're out you're out we've got a full you're crew out. in Deucer's alley and uh judge giamatti himself brooksy you were saying that uh josh is really he's taking a turn right from that evil trade Oh yeah, he he was trying to be innocent after that trade it went down and be like I'm evil, but I'm I'm still innocent in this and now he's just full full villain. And you know why? 
Why is that? He wants Twitter followers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's He's true. learned that leaning in to, like, uh, you know, Darth Maul, mm. big social media following. Well, before he got, you know, Ooh. halved. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call that? I know what a decapitation is. Uh, but what- delegation. <laughs> I mean, that, that is, if that's the outcome for Josh, I'll be satisfied with this entire <laughs> week. I'm saving everything. I hope to be able to deliver oh. it back. Jeremy, I'm sorry for spoiling the Phantom Menace for you. <laughs> Guess I'm not watching that one now. He just said spoilers. <laughs> the Phantom Menace. It's happening. <laughs> um, all right. We have so many matchups. Uh, we've got the starts of the week. we got the boom, boom kicker. we got start to sit decisions. And I, I'm telling you, like, you would think it would be easy for us. But when it's you, boy, that world of tilt, that spin around that you do. Yeah, because when, it, when it's your team – it's not a logical, rational decision anymore. No, it. you're it, right. It's not objective and rational. No. And I was remembering, like, uh, I'm making this decision this week in the Foot Clan. You can, you know, go to every website, see our matchups and everything, and I'm not trying to dominate the show with this. But Jason has his thoughts on who I should flex. I mm-hmm. have to decide between DeAndre Hopkins against Seattle, uh, Devin Singletary against Cleveland, James Conner against Chicago. Chicago, great run defense. Cleveland, good defense. So Jason has his opinion, right? And he's like, ah, I would play Connor, I think is what you said. No, Singletary. Oh, okay. But I had this thought. I was like, oh, man, like that first instinct you have at the beginning of the week. Obviously, you want to transform with new information. But sometimes you've got that conviction. Like this past week, I I wanted to stay with the Cleveland defense. I believed in them over Atlanta. Uh, everyone I talked to kind of wanted me to go to Atlanta. I didn't. It worked out with Cleveland. It wasn't a big difference, but it worked out. Then I remembered my championship game a few years ago where I stuck with Cordero Patterson instead of Boston Scott and Jarrett Patterson, and it cost me an entire title. Mm. And I remembered that, and I'm like, wait, pivoting's better. <laughs> you are on full tilt. You can feel it, right? I mean, I know, I've never it's seen pulsing you. pulsing out of my body. I've oh, never seen you. This, this is how I, I can't am all, lose to Josh. <laughs> I'm like this all the time, but I don't think I've ever seen Andy yeah. so up in arms right now over – all these decisions. I mean, part of it, guys, is the fact both of you are out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not surrounded by – there's not a tilt balance in the force. That's true. I'm if pretty you calm. Gave, you gave me all your tilt. My, I got all of Mike's tilt. I did fu- – We I, all know Al doesn't have any tilt. I, I did remember that I'm in the playoffs in a league I co-manage with the yeah. biggest loser. So, hey, most important league. I did stumble <laughs> upon something uh, this morning, Andy. Do you? Because oh, I boy. asked Jason. I was like, do you He's have good. any uh, – do, like, do you have any action going tonight? So do you do you go and Josh have any players tonight? Alvin Kamara. Okay. So you yes. get to start. Yes. I looked at uh my my semifinal matchup. Christmas Day, I get to sit and watch Patrick Mahomes and AJ Brown to finish the weekend. I will be yeah. done. Yeah. And then Merry Christmas to me. Sorry, family. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Dad's yeah. Busy. I got I got two Christmas Day games too. Christmas weekend. NFL is dominated with football. NFL, I thought I liked this idea of, I the, saw, of the games on Christmas. I'm not so sure I like it anymore. My first Christmas matchup is 11 a.m. I'm thinking, like, I mean, that's a problem, right? <laughs> that's that's gift time. No, I, no, no. You're getting the kids up early. <laughs> yeah. We're the ones way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one waking the kids up at 3 a.m. so I can make football. We got to get yeah. this over with. <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. Yeah. It's uh, unwrap it faster. Here, let me open that for you. 1202. Kids, did you hear that? Oh, my gosh. I, he just dropped off the gifts. Let's go. <laughs> Santa's early yeah. this year. <laughs> All right. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I can't even escape Josh for a moment because the Colts running back situation includes Josh's guy. Jonathan Taylor was listed as a practice in full. Listed as. Because it was a walkthrough. And then Zach Moss was listed as a DNP with the arm injury. Uh Uh-oh. And so uh, Papa Josh getting Jonathan Taylor back, probably with everybody else out there that is rejoicing. He's going to be good, too. I can't even find a pathway for him to be bad. Uh, Go Atlanta. Uh, Keenan Allen. Just one (laughs) one strike to that thumb, man. Yeah. Yeah. You hear that, Falcons? I'm, I'm not saying dude. That Arthur, you Arthur Smith do it. would do it. Yeah, I'm. I think any NFL defender is going to know. Keenan Allen did not practice, has not practiced, will not practice probably, and will probably not play. 
That's yeah, there, the truth. He's, he hasn't practiced. There's just no reason for him to play. It would be foolish, unnecessary. I need another meditation from this book for my Keenan <laughs> Allen shares. Uh, Tyree Kill did not practice on Wednesday. That is, uh, you know, not too abnormal for the Dolphins. They're actually, whatever they're doing, and famous last words, right? Whatever they have done to preserve Raheem Mostert, who's played every single game this year, has 18 rushing touchdowns. Part of that has been skipping practice on Wednesday, and he's not practicing. A-chan is not practicing with the toe. They did that last week, and A-chan played. Hill's the one that you're really watching closely because he did miss last week's game. Mike McDaniel said this is a part of making sure he's all cylinders go for the Cowboys game. I would put a lot of money on him playing. Seems yeah. like it. All right, Josh Jacobs on track to play Monday night. That would be Christmas against the Chiefs. So Jacobs could be back. Okay. They were a lot better without him. They put up like 63 points <laughs> with him on the bench. He was the problem. Yep. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, DMP, concussion, still optimistic, moving through protocol. Should be back out there. Pretty big implications for your Ridley, Ingram stacks. Hunter Henry did not practice on Wednesday. Yeah. Hunter did not practice. Yeah, this is listed as a as a knee issue. Would we'll just have to keep following up because he's a great start this week. Should he be healthy? Um, but I believe it is just a contusion, not an actual. Th this should be pain management, and I believe he will play this week. But uh, we'll see how the rest of the week goes. And then the Saints will have Chris Olave back tonight against the Rams. And uh, Olave is very very close to being start of the week yeah. for me. If if I have him, I'm playing him. Yeah, the matchup is is delicious. The Rams have struggled tremendously against the pass, and uh, so, I mean, I, I've I might have looked at this matchup like a lot with the Camara, yeah, because the Rams are listed as like one of the best defenses against the run. Um, in fact, over the last five weeks, they are number one in terms of fantasy points given up to the running back position. Go, go, do you have the teams? Yes, I do. Okay, and that is what is giving me a little bit of optimism here because they were not. I mean, they were pretty good all year. Seattle without Kenneth Walker. Okay. Cardinals without James Conner. Cleveland. Yeah. Baltimore. Okay. Washington without Brian Robinson. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it's a good run. You need some context for that for sure. But they should throw the ball to Kamara. He doesn't have to run it. I agree. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. Look, I know it would be like kind of unethical to fire my brother-in-law over a fantasy football match. Like that, saying it out loud just doesn't seem reasonable. Not, not when you take into account what our business is. But couldn't I like at least make him do some like crappy work? Oh, for sure. You're his boss, right? Like, yeah, clean the toilets. Like we don't need <laughs> boxes for things very often, but I could have him build boxes for a day. And then tear him down? Yeah. We need more room after he makes them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we, if you guys I could. I actually think this is a brilliant idea. Yeah. Couldn't you? you, you will you, you brainstorm with me? Yeah, I will absolutely. Because I know you, you're not above wanting Josh to suffer no, for, no re for any for reason. For no reason. Yeah. For fun. I mean, that's <laughs> for my own personal enjoyment. Yeah. Or just make him work at all. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. just do your job. Do something. Um. Man, he's loving this. He's soaking it up. All right, we have two Saturday games. We're going to kick it off with the Bengals, 8-6, and six, taking on the 7-7 seven and seven Pittsburgh Steelers. These are two AFC North teams going in the opposite direction. Browning, three straight wins. Pittsburgh, three, three straight losses. And uh, Browning has been great. Let's, let's just yeah. call it what it is. Yeah, that's fair. Last three games, quarterback 4-4-8. Four, four, and eight. So, you know, I think he's still in consideration. Pittsburgh here, two-point home underdogs. Their offense becomes their defense's problem because they can't move the football very well. I Did you guys watch the play where George Pickens didn't block and then his yes. excuse? You see his excuse? Yes, his excuse was that he didn't want to get injured like what happened to Tank it's, Dell. He doesn't – He's and then I believe he even said, like, you don't want to hold on to a block too long or something like that. How about it, you start one? He, he didn't remotely start one. I believe his right arm moved outward a little bit. Did you hear Jalen Warren's comments? Because he, he was the he was the one that was running in for the touchdown and would have easily scored had he blocked the guy. Uh -huh. What did he say? I didn't see he, that. He said I would have blocked for him. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> get bodied. Like that's the best possible response. 
Oh, man. It actually made me mad because he said that, and then he's like, but, you know, we, we play differently and everything. And he was, like, trying to be the good teammate while still saying it. I mean, that the, play, the if you haven't seen up. the play, it's unbelievable. He he just – he might as well have been on the sideline. Like, they played 10 on 11 football that play, and it cost them. Well, Jake Browning gets to take on Mason Rudolph or Kenny Pickett. Uh, Rudolph is expected to start this game. Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, it's been bad the last couple of weeks, especially for – like Najee Harris, 2.4, 2.8 yards per carry. Uh, I would really not want to play him in a semifinal matchup. I'd be trying to find a diamond in the rough. Somebody. Anybody. Uh, Let's. Uh, so so put that to the test if you want. I mean, I just. McKinnon? Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it gets harder when you start talking like Justice Hill, you start talking Charbonnet, um, anybody in that category. But the last two weeks, I mean, guys, he's been a single-digit fantasy scorer in four yeah. or five weeks. And the, it was Cincinnati that he scored against. If he scores a touchdown, that's where Najee is now. Najee's in the if he scores, which is the story for everybody. If anybody scores, you're okay for the week. Right, right. and then you have to ask, okay, what teams are going to score enough points to be likely good odds-on favorites for those rushing touchdowns, and that's where you look at the current state of the Steelers and you say, I just don't believe there's going to be enough points scored to make this a good bet. This is a team that is projected for 17 and a half NFL points. That's their line. So um, it just it's a really nervous start. Jalen Warren, he has only averaged 6.8 fantasy points per game over the last month. And then you have Pickens, who I, you know, I don't, look, what are you doing with the Steelers? Are you playing these guys? I mean, Deontay Johnson has scored three straight times. I'm fine with Deontay. Okay. I mean, the, the target share will be there, and the matchup is there. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But other than that, it's – if I, guess, I think you're right. I got one real nasty running back question for you because the matchup is, uh, as they say in the biz, juicy. Deonta Foreman. Mm, against I, dude, the Arizona Cardinals. I, I looked or this, Najee. I looked this up like crazy because the price of Foreman in DraftKings to make a lineup is is phenomenal. I want to say he's like in the fourth. Is like well, let me look at my lineup. Okay, so you got you. it. So, but I I was looking at this and last week, uh, obviously he had a very bad week. I think he was six for negative six yards. Now yeah. some of that came on goal line where you know you're not expecting a lot of yardage and if you know the defense sells out to stop you whatever but they did make a successful transition during that game to Roshan Roshan gave, was in my DFS lineup because I think he's the better player I, I I'm starting to lean that way as yeah. well um Roshan they were winning that game I mean with yep. Roshan successfully running ahead yeah. of Foreman so there will be fantasy success for the Chicago Bears backfield it's very difficult to know who I currently go Roshan Foreman Herbert Najee <laughs> yeah it was it was a Najee question <clears throat> um on the other side of the ball Jake Browning's been getting it done he's not gonna have Jamar Chase are you now are you still as confident to stream Jake Browning without Jamar I I hate to say this because I but I can't escape it like I, I wanted to just muzzle it I, I think Pittsburgh wins the ball game oh so does whoa. that count as my I almost mean, upset can, yeah, yeah. Andy's almost upset of the week. You heard it here. Start Najee Harris. No, no. What? I, I, I don't think you so. You just said they're going to score more points than the Bengals. Yeah, but not a lot. It, it could be point. I think 17, <laughs> 17 14 final maybe. Um, you know, this, this offense changes without Jamar Chase. It really does. He draws so much attention. T. Higgins has been inconsistent. But he's going to get all of the work, so I think he's in play for fantasy. And he then is. Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon's in play as well. Tyler Boyd, I know some people are picking him up. There's a chance that Tyler Boyd's a decent start this week. The Steelers are a a slot wide receiver matchup to target. Yeah, uh, Tyler Boyd is that's just a, that's a nervous start. though. Yeah, that's a risky one, Jason. Do you feel any confidence I, I, there? I do not feel a ton of confidence there. I I know that they're uh, you know usually beat in the slot. But they haven't given up a ton of fantasy points in general to the wide receiver position. The The way that the Pittsburgh Steelers play is, you know, boring, slow uh, football where you don't have a lot of upside, I don't think, in this game. So uh, I'm not playing Brownie. 
Yeah, I don't think I would okay. play Browning either. I'd play Higgins, I'd play Mixon, and that's it. The Buffalo Bills at 8-6, and six, resurgent, dare I call them, resurgent, taking on the, whoa, give me a word for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Descending. Blarf. Blarf. Well, that's a better one. DraftKings Sportsbook line Buffalo on the road, 11.5 point favorites. <laughs> the over-under oh. is 44 points. Uh, Buffalo, it seemed like they were all but down and out, and then they came back and beat Kansas City and Dallas. And they beat Dallas. I mean, they ruined the fantasy output of Dak Prescott and everybody not named CeeDee Lamb who got a late touchdown. They were great. You've got, uh, you know, a DNP due to illness for J James Cook, who had an absolutely monster game last week. It and is about to have another one. You think so? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, the Chargers are not good at stopping quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, or tight ends. So, like, those are most just, of the positions. Yeah, those are most of the positions for fantasy. They just they allow everyone to score a lot. Mm. And specifically, what they do is in the Even beginning Raiders. of the game, in the beginning of the game, you're able to throw all over them. And then you're like, oh, I'm up a lot. Let me run all over them. So, uh, yes, I mean, I I think you, Josh Allen's the quarterback one on the year. Obviously, he's in. James Cook has been as good as any running back over the last month in the NFL. He's locked. Diggs has been poor, disappointing. There's no way you go away from him. I think he's a great start this week. Now, Gabe Davis should not be on a roster. No, he has uh, four geese, four gooses, four geese. What, what do you say there in, with a fantasy? Geese. Four oh, goose oh, a be, no, no, it's be, six. He needs to get to oh, six he, before the he, end of the, you know. Well, there's enough weeks. He will get to six. So um, in the 10 days of Christmas, six geese a laying. And he'd been laying some geese. Goose a laid. Uh, what, he has three weeks to get two more? Yeah. Yeah, he can do it. He could get three more. <laughs> um, and then you get a gaggle of geese, and sure. that's really what you want. Um, Just don't play Gabe Davis. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, real quick on James Cook, it was an illness that he missed practice with, uh, on Wednesday, so he theoretically should be good to go. But if you are dumpster diving for this team, it, I would go Ty Johnson over Latavius Murray. Dalton Kincaid just had his own goose. I am trying to avoid the Kincaid situation. They're not throwing the football a ton. They might not need to in this game. There's two tight ends in, in the set now. So, yeah, Isaiah Likely, yes. Hunter Henry, if he's active, yes. I'd play both those guys over at Kincaid. Do you disagree? And no, no, I do not disagree. Don Kincaid, <laughs> uh, Don Kincaid limited practice on Tuesday and Wednesday with a shoulder. Meanwhile, Dawson Knox was full practice. Easton Stick gets the start. Austin Eckler was not good last week. This team, you know, it's it's hard to really start anybody. Because and, and maybe that's the answer for the Chargers this week. I mean, if they can shut down Dallas, they can certainly shut down this offense. Yeah, I mean, if if you started one wide receiver, I think it's Palmer. Uh, I don't really want to start Joshua Palmer for Easton Stick. And when it comes to Eckler, Eckler is a player that like you could obviously you could still start him. You just need to take a look at Ty at, Chandler. Oh, Ty oh Chandler, man, for that's sure. tough. That's Ty, not tough at all. It's tough because of the Detroit. Matchup. I don't. I don't Detroit's care. Detroit's the number one yeah, defense yeah. against the I, run. I don't care about the matchup. I'll take the volume, and that's like the, we got even more. It like it wasn't a huge news blur, but it was more of uh, Kevin O'Connell saying, like Ch Ty Chandler's going to be our lead guy. And when they were asking about him getting Madison back to practice, which Madison still hasn't practiced yet, it was. Yeah, like it'll be great to get Alex back for some depth. And it was oh, okay, okie dokie. This is this is Ty Chandler. So yes, the matchup is not what you want to see going into the the semis of your playoffs. But he, it, it's volume, pass catching, and juice is my algebraic equation. Which that's a player that the the process is I'm playing that guy, and Eckler has. None of those things right now. I, I do think he's got volume. He's been getting the ball a ton. Now, last week they were blown out, you know, in extraordinary fashion. Now, the Bills are better than the Raiders, 
But yeah, but sixty three points the, ain't happening. Sixty three points ain't happening. The way it happened, high thirties good. At, yeah, absolutely. But I, my point is, they're not going to have basically three quarters where they don't need to use Austin. So Eckler. would you go Chandler or Eckler, Jason, just to put it to the test? Because I I see, I would I, I would, see Chandler being a potential trap this week. I, I do. I'm too. excited about it. I I the potential. But. I really really like him. I like what we've seen. I like the juice. I hate the matchup. I think those are extraordinarily close. I've got them literally back to back in my rankings. I have Ty Chandler one yeah, spot that's ahead. Wild to have. I have no confidence to play Eckler. Well, I I mean, right now they're twenty four and twenty five. So th those are my running backs. Uh, Ty Chandler's twenty four. Austin Eckler's twenty five. So it's not like I'm smashing either guy into my lineup. And you can play either. I do think Austin Eckler has an okay game gets near double digit fantasy points, gets enough targets and and the you know, I I'm not like completely terrified of Austin Eckler where you have to bench him. Joshua Palmer we're not messing around with uh Chasen last week. I don't think you will enjoy it, but no. he would be the one to play from this game. Yeah. Agreed. Quick break back to some Sunday matchups. The Indianapolis Colts, currently in possession of the seventh seed in the AFC, take on the six and eight Atlanta Falcons. Colts are eight and six. DraftKings Sportsbook line Atlanta minus one at home. The over under is forty four and a half. Little dome matchup. We know the Colts play fast, and we know the Falcons play much much better at home. Like oh, I thought you were going to say poorly. Uh, they 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 can play poorly anywhere, but much better at home. Their their They're home favored. road splits are are very crazy. Taylor Heineke taking over again for the Atlanta Falcons. Snip snap. Uh, Bijan Robinson with negative fantasy points last week. Indianapolis very vulnerable on the ground. the The problem is is that um, Bijan has been thus far this year unable to score fantasy points when not handed the football. Or throwing the football. Like, he, he's averaging 0, 0.0 fantasy points on plays he was not included on. It is it is true. Last week was um, obviously a disaster. Uh, he was fumbled, and he didn't get the ball very much. He only had seven carries, ten total opportunities. That's not enough. But also keep in mind, this was – that was the weather game of the week. That was a uh, torrential downpour, like I insane rain, and I think – for whatever stupid reason, they thought in this. <laughs> well, ironically, Algiers their weather guy. Ironically, I, I was going to say maybe they thought you know ball protection and just the grinding back. It would be better to use Algier because of the weather. You know, Bijan did fumble <laughs> in yeah. the weather. So Tyler Algier has not fumbled one time on 184 opportunities. Right. So I I think some of the reason that the opportunities went away because keep in mind prior to last week's crazy rain game. This is 22, carry, uh, 22 opportunities, 23 opportunities, 17 opportunities, 24. Bijan's getting work. And during that stretch, he was the running back 10, 3, 20, and 11. <laughs> Bijan's so, more of an indoor back. <laughs> <laughs> give yeah. me give me your confidence level 0 to 100 in Bijan, both of you guys. This 92. Week. Uh, 88. Okay, so both of you very confident um, to just go back to that. Yes. Drake London. Confidence level on Drake London to bounce back because you know he had a, a breakout performance and then of course um, last week happened two for twenty four. Yeah, I mean, it. My confidence, Drake London's fifty percent. Uh, you know, I could see this game. Has it been there every every week? Fifty percent? No, there's been weeks where I've been very confident, like when we put him in. Uh, yeah, the you Tampa know, our, matchup. Uh, the Tampa matchup. Is he more of an indoor wide receiver? <laughs> He's more of an at-home, indoor, good matchup type of wide receiver. This is some of those, but it's not a great matchup. I do think this game hits the over. I think there will be enough points scored where I'm not I'm not moving away from Drake London. I think he is a, a, a fine enough start. He's just not – it's not a perfect, you know, stars aligning type of matchup. Uh, Kyle Piss, Johnny Smith not messing around, I assume. No. Uh, so London no. and Robinson, you guys have confidence in. On the other side of the ball, Jonathan Taylor, we expect him to be back out on the field. We we don't know if Moss will be back with him. The early report, Moss was going to try to play through the injury. Jonathan Taylor playing through injury. Trey Sermon and Tyler Goodson are on the roster as well. 
Yeah, as of now, it seems like Jonathan Taylor is going to be the entire backfield. Like he, he'll go back to being the dude. He's practicing in full. Zach Moss isn't practicing. So let me let me put something to the test for you then with the running back position. If you have Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Taylor, Mike or Ty Chandler, Taylor's. I want to mention oh, it. Ty that's Chan Taylor for me. Okay, Taylor's matchup is against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta is fifth against the running back position this year. But you will go right back to Taylor. Yeah, there's like. That it's, sucks. It's just having, that sucks for me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's having more confidence in the guy with the contract, with the backup out. So I mean, the the, the situations are are have some parallels, but I'm more secure in Taylor. All right, uh, Michael Pittman. We're still monitoring whether he'll make it back yeah, due I mean, to the vicious concussion. But being limited on Wednesday, that's that's I, at least the pathway. I would be very comfortable with Josh Downs in the absence of it's Michael Pittman. So weird because you should be. I, I'm I'm in agreement that you should be, but he has he has vanished. I yeah, mean, three I, targets, three I just, targets, the pace five. of play. Yeah. And I, I mean, especially if Michael Pittman's out, who are you going to throw to? But probably, Jonathan, I, it's, probably Jonathan Taylor, man. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. <laughs> With that is. stupid thumb. Oh, please don't be able to catch, too. I, I, I think if Michael Pittman sits, there's going to be a real temptation to play Josh Downs or Alec Pierce. or You know, you go, well, they got to throw the ball. I, I, I really personally do not want to play that game. Um, you, you say he's vanished, but he hasn't really been there for a long time. Not since I'm he, saying that the targets have vanished. That, well, yeah. I mean, so in week 12, he had this weird 13 target game. Um, still wasn't a good game. Ended up with 43 yards. But if you look at his targets, three, three, five, three, one. I mean, he's not, he's not someone that I'm starting even just because Pittman's gone. I'm not going to go, well, I need to, I need to put him in then. That's my, my stance. The Colts defense, I think, is in play this week. They're fourth in fantasy points per game. Atlanta, Taylor Heineke, no, he, he's a chucker. They will intercept the ball in this game. Um, uh, I think that's the end of the discussion in this one. Other than just whether Gardner fits the streaming quarterback, he does category I actually, for you. I, I actually think Taylor Heineke fits the streaming category for me. Ooh. He's not. He's. He, Nick, Nick Mullins or these two guys? These two guys. I would go. I'd, I'd go Mullins. I would go Gardner oh, over both of them. Mullins is is Detroit. Detroit. That's nice with Jefferson and Addison. Yeah, I would lean Mullins. The Seattle Seahawks at seven and seven take on the five and nine Tennessee Titans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Seattle on the road minus two and a half. The over under is forty one and a half. Seahawks. They're sitting at eighth in the NFC, still fighting for a playoff spot. Um, we've seen the Tennessee stout, perfect run defense be a lot weaker over the last month, five games. And um, they lost an all-pro defensive lineman, which is impacting that. They've allowed 95 rushing yards per game in three of four. So, you know, we saw Singletary dominate them last week. Kenneth Walker? Full confidence. He, he he just he just was dominant against the Eagles. Um, I Kenneth Walker's a great play. And you you no. may have got the little alert of Kenneth Walker moves from healthy to questionable because he didn't practice on Wednesday. It was listed as a shoulder. Uh, but you have beat reporters saying I'm not reading into it. Yeah, I'm just it's going to be a Wednesday day of rest for a running back who just carried the ball a ton a couple days ago. This is a Tennessee defense that is also very weak in the passing game. You have Metcalf, Lockett, and Jackson Smith and Jigba who are all going to play with Geno Smith this week. Smith coming back from the injury. Uh, are you playing all three guys? I, I think am, you can. I, I think you can play all three. I would order them DK, Jackson, Lockett. Oh, really? I'd, I'd still go I'd stay D in the normal order. I'd go DK, Lockett, Jason. Okay. Uh, nine targets last week for Lockett that turned I mean, into just three catches with Drew Locke. But, they like, were not on the same page. Yeah, they were bad targets, and and uh, there was there was some shenanigans that the defense was getting away with against Lockett. On the other side, Derrick Henry with the disaster last week. Tajay Spears is has been involved, but it's not meant great things. And then Jalen Burks came back last week. I mean, he's been back for two weeks, but he came back last week to some um, opportunities. DeAndre Hopkins. You know, he had a a kind of terrible game, but it was like 
he was a good throw from an 82-yard touchdown in that game where Will Levis underthrew him when he was wide open on the back side of the defense. Uh, he had nine targets, just caught three of them, had another drop. It was kind of an off game for him. Seattle's been exceptionally vulnerable in the passing game. Now you, I mean, you have – Is there any – You have a backup quarterback probably. There is a, well, a pretty a, good – You either from, have a hobbled quarterback right. or you've got a backup quarterback. You're talking – which one is which? <laughs> which one is which? You either have a hurt, high ankle sprained – uh, one week, Will Levis, or you have a benched Ryan Tannehill. Benched, close to retirement, Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I look. I I still have some optimism around Hopkins this week. He he gets to double even, digit even targets. With Tannehill. Yeah, well, even with Tannehill, because of the way this game flow is going to likely be, I would be looking at it with the opportunity that you know this team's going to be down. Uh, they're going to have to throw the football. Seattle is not a. Uh, they give up thirty one points a game to opposing wide receivers. It's like break up that thirty one across the receiver core, um, I, I think Hopkins is, is a fairly safe floor. I just don't know if the ceiling's there this week. What, if, I, what if I remind you that through the first six games, Ryan Tannehill was averaging 188 yards no, I know. and two total passing touchdowns. It Here, was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> to start to start he, the season. He lost his job because basically, of it. Basically, I, I know. He, he played through the bye week, and Hopkins, through that stretch, was the wide receiver 30, 61, 59, 40, 8, and 82 so he did not you know he he pretty much crushed you almost all those weeks with Tannehill so I I don't have the same optimism but I have not looked into matchups with DeAndre Hopkins nearly as much as Andy who was I mean, making a it should be good a close decision on Hopkins he's he's diving so deep it would be great if I could bury Hopkins as an option I just don't believe it I, I don't believe and that as a, as a reality. I'm, I'm there with you. Of I think that Hopkins is in play. He's just he's a he is a decision of your options. Your other options could be better. Okay, so who would you start, Mike, between like in the flex, Hopkins or James Connor? <laughs> I I had already told him I would go Connor, and Connor or Singletary. I'd you, go you, Connor. Okay. So I hope he goes Hopkins now that I'm Singletary and you're Connor. There's just no way to get it right, guys. Oh, that yeah, is – got a 33% chance getting it right. <sighs> just make the right decision, man. I, I, To be honest with you, I've gone through all three and, and really felt like – I've had moments where I'll put one in and I'm like, he's definitely the guy. <laughs> yeah. And then like no, later in the day, it's – Devin Singletary – Jason, you, there was a, a strong announcement walking to the lunch table <laughs> – Singletary's in. He's locked. He's locked in. <laughs> I did miss that. <laughs> and then Mike goes, Mike, all he had to do was go, okay. And that put that was enough to put the well, maybe he's not super he's locked. He's locked. <laughs> maybe oh, the man. lock is in the it's in the, oh. the hinge, but it's not locked down. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why. <laughs> I think it'll be Singletary. All right. But it, yes, Hopkins should be in play. It's a it's Here, a, it's not a close to a guarantee. Here, here's though. what I, what I'll say too is I mean, and we give this advice. I'm going to follow up myself. Like, you've got two Saturday games, right? You've got a Thursday game, and so you're going to get more information. Yeah. In the, terms of the way your matchup is proceeding, like if Alvin Kamara comes out and and has a 25 point performance tonight, you know, the Singletary and Connor become much safer options. Like. DeAndre Hopkins could go out and do what he did five of the first six weeks with Tannehill and be a two-point guy, whereas it's very unlikely that Connor and Singletary end up in that zone. So I'm hoping for a good game so it makes that decision easier. All of you should be doing that with your matchups. If you have, you know, Cup and Puka and uh, Kamara and those players that are going in tonight's matchup, let that be a somewhat, you know, maybe a filter for the way you play your players on Sunday and if you have Saturday matchups. Yeah, it's good advice. Also, it's also a way to kick the decision down the road. Also, really, really <laughs> important um, with all the games on separate days, very important to set your lineup in locking your positional players in. Huge. If, the earlier they play, make sure they are in the running back or the wide receiver spot. Don't let someone start in your flex on a Thursday or a Saturday. It, it takes your opportunity and your ability to make – new better informed decisions away come Sunday and Monday yeah it's not just flex it's not like moving them out of the flex just due to injury it's moving them out of the flex just due to opportunity so mm -hmm. that's a good good reminder um Derek Henry confidence this week one to a hundred 
69. Nice. Uh, he, he has been, it's, it's been fantastic or it's been a fantastic disaster. Like that's, that's it for Derrick Henry. The matchup is fine. You have Seattle the last six weeks, 30th against running backs when adjusting for schedule. So I, he's in. Like if if you happen to make it through, like I made it through with Derrick Henry, it was it felt really really bad. And seeing that feels really bad to to move forward uh, into the semis. But just look at the three weeks before that. Mm-hmm. Don't go further back, or you're gonna freak yourself well, out. You, just look at those. Well, three. Papa Josh has Henry. If anyone wants to know, so he'll probably be fine. Um, he probably will be. He's the running back eight on the course of the season. The recency bias of this last really bad game is is not the right approach. I mean, you should be what starting Derrick Henry. What was he in week 13 and 14 in terms of fantasy finish? The running back three and the running back 10. Okay. And those were weeks that Tajay Spears was also in the top 20 on those weeks. So when they were running the it, football well, it, is, it benefited both backs. It's, it's basically it's the does, offense. Yeah, it's does the team score. Are they in the game? Are they up? If they are, you know, I mean, that's... That's not going to be the case. They're going to be w getting whooped. You think so? It's I, only a two-and-a-half point line. Yeah, but that, they're the home team. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a, a an utter beatdown. And Tannehill at quarterback, Yeah, I don't know. I it's, think that's worse than Levis. do they get inside the five. And yeah, like, yeah like fair enough. Last, they will. Last week, uh, Will Levis stole a touchdown from us. So, us... <laughs> on the you know, Derrick Henry's team. Yeah. So it, it could have been salvaged, All right. but it just it didn't go that way. Sorry, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Detroit, 10-4, and four, Minnesota 7-7. Seven and seven. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus three, over and under is 47. Huge game, playoff implications. Uh, if the Lions win the ball game, they clinch the NFC North, that would be their first division title since what year? I know the answer. Oh, man. Mike, do you know what the answer? Year? I mean, it's got to be like... Give me a guess. Can I... It's 2023 right now. I'm going to say the... I'm going to say the George Bush administration. The original. Oh, wait. The uh, W... Uh, not, not W. No, not W. It's 1993. So, I believe that was... Am that, I close? I don't is know. Is that Bush? I think that, that might, might, that might be. be. That was Clinton. That was Clinton. Was that Clinton? Yeah. All right. Can we get anybody yeah, in the Kyle, building that Kyle knows? jumped in and said Clinton. Oh, okay. it is Clinton. All right. I go to him. I mean, that was really close. It was 1993. That's really close. These teams play again in a couple of weeks. Uh, you got a dome game. You've got the uh, the playoffs on the line. You've got Nick Mullins, who was not afraid to throw the ball down the field with an 8.4 yards per attempt last week. You've got elite weapons in Addison and Jefferson. I know he got lucky. Oh, he um, got. But you know what? I'd rather a backup quarterback willing – be willing to take those chances yeah. for the sake of my offensive weapons. Like if you bring in a guy and they're just dinking and dunking it and playing it in the screen game, that takes Justin Jefferson's opportunities away. You no, know, and and the the nice thing is you want your backup quarterback coming in to be aggressive when you have great weapons. Bush's if he, term ended in '93. I'm oh, taking I'm taking a dub. You got to take a dub. That is a <laughs> sorry, dub. sorry. Go on. <clears throat> um, the the well. I guess it's not really a dub. Oh, that's a dub. We got to look at the the I date. I think they that probably they clinched, clinched post election. Yeah. I, I, Wait, I just, election's not in ninety three though, right? No, that would no. Oh, it would have been in ninety two. The yeah. election would have been ninety two. Yeah. So I think I think Bush was probably the like in January making that transition yes. in ninety three. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you do not. You so got Clinton that was L. totally like at the White House. Yeah. Yeah. That's an L. So you got I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, it's an L. Sorry, buddy. I already took the W, guys. <laughs> uh, we're going to take that W back. Uh, but m the point is, these are really good weapons. Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson. Like, throw the ball and give them the chance to make plays. That's what happened last week. And obviously, Addison was a monster. If you had to get backed into starting him, congratulations. Are you starting him again this week in a matchup that looks perfect? Like, Mullen seems like a really good streamer when you've got these weapons. And I'd I'm, play him over Brownie. Me too. A, a, all of the streaming guys, like I, I pivoted earlier when I said I think Heineke is a, a, a good start or, or Minshew, all those guys I would play Mullins over over them. I'm still nervous about Addison because I'm nervous about second options with a backup quarterback. Uh, Hawkinson and Jefferson I have more confidence in than Addison. Ty Chandler I do think, I think that the range of outcomes is more severe than you would think. 
No, I, I'm I'm in agreement. Okay, because the I Lions' think, defense, man, they shut the run down, and they could be well ahead in this game. They are favored on the road. They play well in domes. Yes, I'm. You know. I'm not uh, like the floor for Ty Chandler. It's it's very low. I I would not argue with that. But it's I see the 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 range of outcomes that I'm seeing for Ty Chandler is more of a he's a a a good running back to start who has ceiling. So I'm just I'm playing him. I'm getting him in. All right, on the other side, golf. We okay here? Oh my gosh. I... Mike, are we okay here? No. I mean Mike Mike was sitting there. What was the decision you were trying to make on, on golf this week? It was It's the same as last Flacco? week. Flacco? Jared Goff, Joe Flacco, or Jake Browning. I just can't imagine not taking golf in a game they're favored. Man. In a dome. And that that's Kind of where we are the, right now. The Vikings on the course of the season are averaging 12.8 fantasy yes. points allowed to quarterbacks. Golf, oh, my gosh, man. Golf has – And they're at home. Has plenty of games recently <clears throat> where he just sucks. Yeah. Wow. Man, you, I, you I, can never I, put too much confidence in Jared Goff. I, it's like he'll pick your kids up from school on time one time. But if you ask them to do it the whole week, you're playing with fire. I, I, I'm, I'm pivoting. I told you – Earlier, I think I would go golf. I I think I would go Flacco. I, <laughs> You're just spinning, Mike. No, no, no. I I I think it's, I think it's the right call. Uh, it's hard after what Goff just did. Five passing touchdowns against Denver, the number one quarterback on the week. But Jake you Browning look at, just had a big game against Minnesota. If you look at the course of the season, uh, Goff has been really bad the vast majority of times. Like. His ceiling is good, but his consistency is a C right now. It's worth noting that Jared Goff against the Blitz um, and against Cover 2, which is what Minnesota is the highest in the NFL in both, his splits are really bad. He, when you put the pressure on him, you can see some of those golfful throws. And um, so I, it is a debate. It's a debate because it, it's made harder by the fact Goff had such a big game last week. He threw five touchdowns. Like, if Goff in had a, a very, bad game. In a difficult matchup. If, if Goff had a bad game last week. I think every single person would be benching him right now because he was on a streak of that is, nonstop bad games. It's true, but the, the hard part is is it's like, who's more likely to throw three touchdown passes, Joe Flacco or Jared Goff? Um, Probably Flacco. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's a – I mean, I to me, I was Goff, so I thought that that would – Goff has thrown three touchdowns three times. Yeah, and Flacco's what he's, he's one played three, one out of three oh, he games. Had, he had three. Yeah, all right. I I thought so. It's let me a very that. difficult decision. Uh, let's see, Joe Flacco last or two weeks ago was three touchdowns against the Jags. All right, uh, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, play them. Yeah, with fear and trembling, but they should be both be okay. Almond Ross, St. Brown. I, you, I, you know, you play him as well. You play him for sure. I did find it interesting. I saw some statistics from a good friend of the show, Scott Barrett, that he was I, – I don't remember the, the exact, uh, you know, what he found, but he was saying it projects to be potentially a really bad game for Amon Ra. Um, okay. So maybe that uh, – you're, you're going to start him no matter yeah. what. It was more for DFS when he was bringing it up, uh, but it's worth highlighting when it comes to the conversation of Jared Goff. Like if, if this is a very tough, difficult – situation and scheme for his number one target that obviously affects the quarterback all right sam laporta i would probably play that guy yeah you're gonna play him the matchup stinks that's good is there any chance he could just suck there is yeah oh sweet absolutely sorry everybody <laughs> i wonder guess who has sam laporta evil incarnate <laughs> all right um anything else from this game you want to discuss uh, just Kyle was following up on what you were talking about, Jay, is in cover two, Amon Ra averaging a meager .74 yards per route run on a 20% target share on 54 routes against cover two. The truth two. is, is like your perception of the Minnesota defense from years gone by should be gone. Yes. They're a completely different defense. And and they were, like, they're a shocking team. They seemed like they were just selling. Mm -hmm. Like over over the off season, they felt like this is a team that's going to trust the process. Yeah, and it was no our and Brian Flores is like no, let's make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, and then they were, have turned out a a fantastic defense. It, do you have a name at the top of your head for most surprising team in the NFL this year? Most Ooh. impressively surprising? Oh, I mean, besides Houston, to me, like the Colts are at the top of my list. I think the Colts They're are very, number, yeah, maybe they number should one. Be very high. 
Uh, but I, I would, yeah, I'd stick with Houston. Yeah, th- I mean, those are the two that okay. that I thought of. Not Minnesota. No, I don't think so. Minnesota's um, coming into the year, I thought they were going to be good. They're surprising when they started losing games, to start the season, lost their quarterback, and then turned the ship around. That's surprising. Yeah, yeah Cousins, Hall, Dobbs, Doing Mullins, like four quarterbacks. After Cousins, they've just had garbage quarterback play. The Washington Commanders are 4-10. and ten. They take on the 5-9 and nine New York Jets. A um, couple teams commiserating on disgusting seasons. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Jets minus three. The over-under is 37. Uh, <laughs> Kyle described this matchup as two dumpster fires fulfilling their yeah. duties of playing 17 football games. So <laughs> we didn't mention it because it's really – it's just buzzworthy. I don't know how newsworthy. But Aaron Rodgers was – elevated to the team and said he's not going to play which so like, he will not be playing. so he I mean he's he's taking up a roster spot like what well he he'll he'll go away again right won't if if he doesn't play in well, that he, yeah, he 21 won't. day window if he's not active no they it, they activated him i thought am, am i misremembering I, that i don't think so but maybe maybe i missed that piece of news kyle double check on that yeah, the the headline there is that he's not going to come back. There was a good article by the in the Ringer about the fact that like him stringing them along with the possibility of coming back might have been what prohibited the Jets from ever making a commitment to another quarterback, which makes a lot of logical sense to me. Where you don't want to disrupt this guy who wants you know you don't want to make Aaron Rodgers mad. We all know that. And the the fact of the matter is is if they had just declared him out for the season, maybe they make a move to sign a Carson Wentz or sign a you know, trade right. for a Jameis Winston and just commit to somebody. Uh, he was activated from IR so he could practice. Yeah, okay. So that may, was per, the purpose. Perhaps after, if they don't activate him, then he can't even keep practicing with the team. Right. Maybe he'll, that's what it yeah, is. I, I believe he'll okay. basically go that back That makes more on. sense. And then, um, you know, so because you're going to have – you've got Zach Wilson in this matchup that is not practicing due to concussion – if he doesn't play, it'll be Trevor Simeon. My confidence level on Garrett Wilson goes down tremendously. We discussed it yesterday. Me personally, Garrett Wilson is a play with Zach Wilson. He is not a play with Trevor Simeon. That's my opinion. You guys were softer on that. You're more comfortable with Wilson. The, just the matchup ends. I, it's, it's hard not to see your side of the argument with how bad Trevor Simeon has been. It's been you know incredibly limited and not a – full week of practice, like preparing that Trevor Simeon's going to be the starter. So there, that's the the glimmer of hope. Where are you at? Uh, so like your your Hopkins confidence versus your Garrett Wilson confidence. I, should you be making the decision on those two? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're I, – I see the – I see the Titans being able to have some success in the passing game when they have a deficit. I don't know if I see that with Simeon. I see short – drives and Brees Hall is in play because he's everything they have. Um, but I don't know. It, it's a nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking to start any jet. I, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, this is, this is a game that has a 37 point over under. So yes, the jets are at home and yes, they're favored, but it's a, it's a really, really low over under. And I don't think either of us or any of us expect the Jets to come out here and and score a bunch of points. No, the, I mean their line is twenty uh, right now, so that that's not terrible. I mean, yeah, obviously we're we, we'd love it to be thirty, but I you know the expectation is that they win this game, they score enough points. So Brees to me is is in despite last week being bad. And again, I'm I'm not completely off Garrett Wilson. I do think with you know a full week of practice, not coming in as the backup. Also, the Dolphins last week just completely their pass rush just torched this team I mean they they couldn't the defenders got to the quarterback at the same time the ball did there was nothing they could do and this matchup the commanders got rid of their pass rush um, and since then they've just been the worst defense in the league the best one to target if you look on the course of the season when you adjust for schedule 32nd against quarterbacks, 31st against running backs, 31st against wide receivers, 30th against tight end. So if Trevor Simeon can get it done against anyone, it's here. So I am not I, – I, I, you know, I don't see Garrett Wilson as someone I, I have to bench. On the commander side, the, the Jets are vulnerable to, 
to fantasy running backs. Brian Robinson DNP again on on Wednesday. That's not a good sign for Brian Robinson. No, I, yeah, I'm in agreement. It's so, been, he's been out so long that you would expect if he's going to be back that he'd be out on the practice field. We'll obviously monitor that. Yeah, but it, moving the conversation to Antonio Gibson had five targets last week. Nope. Okay. No, I'm not disagreeing with the stats. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm making uh, a comment on the fact that you saw a ton of work from, uh, from Rodri Chris, Chris Rodriguez. Chris Rodriguez. Rodriguez had 10 carries last week. Who else was in the backfield, too? Because somebody else was back there constantly. Chris Rodriguez I'll had look. 10 carries. Uh, Antonio Gibson had four carries this last week. Now, Gibson played more snaps and is more involved in the passing game. Chris Rodriguez isn't. Was it Derek Gore? No, you had uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Williams. Oh, is that who was Jonathan back there? Jonathan Williams took uh, 20 per, 22% of the snaps. Yeah, that that was the shocker to me. Is It's like you you spent a part of the game wondering if Antonio Gibson was injured. So I know that the Jets can be beaten on the ground. Are you okay with Gibson as a flex? Yeah, I mean, I, I think as a flex it's okay, but it's scary. And I'd be benching every wide receiver. I'm not, I'm not coming. Terry McLaurin had his first good game of the season. I'm not going back to that there's, well against the Jets. There's no way I'm playing a wide receiver. You Over the course of the season in good matchups, you, you have a hard time deciding – who it's going to be. This could be no one against the Jets, and if it's someone, you still have no idea who it's going to be. What about uh, – yeah, I agree, but Curtis seems to be the preferred for Howell. Sure, Hopkins if Howell or finishes Curtis the game. Okay. Hopkins or Curtis Samuel? Hopkins. Okay. Green Bay is 6-8. The Panthers are 2-12. and 12. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay on the road, five-point favorites. Over-under is 37.5, another low one. Um, Green Bay – you know, they, they lost last week to Tampa. It cost them a lot in the playoff race. Carolina, seven of their last eight games have hit the under because it's hard. It's just hard to watch, and it's hard for the Panthers to move the football. Hey, I am hey, being backed into a Adam one. They're winners now. They're winners. <laughs> I am being backed into an Adam Thielen start what? in a dynasty league. So that feels good. Uh, it's, it's, it shouldn't. You know, Chuba Hubbard, 96-plus yards from scrimmage in three straight. I Honestly, I'd love to say play Chuba and no one else. That would kind of be like I'm okay flexing Chuba and playing no yeah, one else. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Yeah, uh, sure. I think you could I think you could not play Chuba, too, if if you really want. Ah, Chuba's been good. Uh, you, uh, that, that's fine. They, Four they, straight good weeks for they Chuba. Are, they are running the ball like crazy because they know they can't pass the ball. And wow, the so, opportunities. The opportunities are outrageous. So, yes, you, you – I'm not saying <laughs> don't play him. pace for 400 opportunities. Um, okay, so Chuba or Ty Chandler? Ty Chandler. Okay. Chuba. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's close. I, uh, I could see it either way. It's just one of those things where you look at how many points the Carolina Panthers score. You know, they, they scored nine this last week they scored six the week before 18 10 10 13 13 15 so they haven't it, scored 20 what points makes Chuba's fantasy output so impressive yeah I mean they they just you you're not hoping for touchdowns I mean for him to finish it running back 11 on a week they scored 10 points it's running back six on a week they score 18 points nice nice effort yeah yeah <laughs> Yes. Nice effort, Chuba. You're really giving your all. On the other side of the ball, teams don't put up a lot of fantasy points against Carolina. They haven't all year. They're second against the quarterback. They're second against wideouts. They're first against tight ends. Um, They're terrible against running backs because the other team can't score. I love Aaron Jones in this game. Love, yeah, love him. Absolutely. Uh, Aaron Jones is, is pretty much getting to a point of must start um, this week. I think he'll be the majority of the offense you've got a very banged up wide receiving core uh Christian Watson not practicing Wednesday Jaden Reed not practicing Wednesday and it's just not a great matchup for the passing game you just want to run on them so I don't I don't mind if in this game you literally say let's start the main running back on each side and not worry about anyone else I, I would be fine just because there's injuries to those wide receivers doesn't mean that like Romeo Dobbs to me becomes like a, a great play. Dude, Dobbs has been bad relative to the opportunity yeah, he's been I given. I mean, yep. the last four games, I think all four weeks, you were like, Dobbs should have a nice game. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver 62, 33, 50, 62. It's like Ben Wicks or it's been Heath or it's been 
some, you know, obviously Jane Reed's been heavily involved. He didn't practice. I think he didn't practice last week. He did not. He has. He is. He takes some through, time. He's played through a lot yeah. of injuries this year. He has not practiced. So I do. Think I'd he'll, play him. He, he if would he's be, active. He would be the one that I would throw in the lineup. But Otherwise, I'm benching Tucker Kraft after last week. I I'm not. I don't like the matchup. Yeah. No. Are he, you okay with him? Kraft is uh, a. Kraft is the level of tight end where you're playing a matchup, and this is literally the number one least points given up to tight end. So no, you're not playing Kraft. I was going to say the if you are. If if you're in the thick and both Watson and Reed are out, I think that it's not a great matchup. <laughs> that but Dontavian Wicks is someone that you could just pick up off the waivers, like the morning of if you really need a wide receiver. You know that gif of the person whose face melts off that people send around. <laughs> what I, the I, I Indiana, Indiana Jones? Jones? I, no, not that not that one. There's like a more of a digital looking face. And his skin falls off. Oh, okay. I just yeah, really yeah. relate to that gift. Um, listen, I see where he's coming from. Listen, I the reason you saw a brief reaction there is because I see an injury update, and the injury update says the Colts running back Jonathan Taylor will practice on Thursday to determine if he can play in Week 16. Ooh. Oh, I determine. So Whoa. there's a, there's a chance he gets out there, and he's like, ah, my thumb is just so painful right now. I can't really hold the football. I'm going to take another week, and you know, be ready for. Um, Wow. Uh, you know, the plot thickens. Okay. And just as a friendly reminder, if Zach Moss is out and Jonathan Taylor is out, it's probably Trey Sermon. I don't know that it is Trey Sermon. I I think it is. Before that game got away, uh, what's the other – I'm forgetting the name uh, of the other running back there. He he was getting work ahead of Sermon. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean – Let's see. So we got – it. Uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Tyler Goodson. Thank you. Yeah, so Tyler Goodson, Tyler Goodson finished with twenty eight percent of the snaps. Trey Sermon was at forty three percent. I'll say this: if, if took if, half of the running back. I'm carries. not even touching those guys in the matchup against the fourth best run defense in football. If those guys are, if, if Moss and Taylor are out, I, I'm not willing to mess around with. However, that would go. I think it would be a lot of Gardner Minshew and just Gamble Town on the ground. Yeah, that's fair. I got, oh yeah, a tweet from John Daigle pointing out Goodson out touched Sermon eight to two until the Colts were up fourteen or twenty four thirteen. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I agree with Andy. The the right answer is neither. Tanya Harding did the wrong thing, right? Tanya Harding? I don't think that's gonna help you win your matchup if you take out Josh's knees. I mean, she got a movie made. I wouldn't be targeting Josh. Oh, you're you're going to NFL players? I'm, I'm asking you if she did. We're the taking wrong, this to the next. I'm level. asking you if she did the wrong. Yes, thing. Yes, she did the wrong thing. Okay, that's okay. all I'm asking. No, I'm happy you asked. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. I think Papa Josh is going to be in studio tomorrow, ahead of the matchup. Nice. So. I don't know if there's like, – can we put, like, one of those uh, big water balloons above his head that I could shoot in the middle of the show? Whoa, we can do whatever we want. You, actually, you can make him hang it. I guess that would damage a lot of our equipment. Worth it. <laughs> All right. Start to the week this week. I, I am going with Joe Flacco. I'm taking Joe Flacco in the Houston matchup. So your start of the week is not Jared Goff. No, Mike. Okay. Who would you Good. start between <laughs> Joe Flacco and Jared Goff? Andy. Previously this week, I said Jared Goff. After today's show, it's it's Joe Flacco. I All agree. right. Lay it out. Um, it's the pass attempts. I mean, they've been through the roof no matter the situation. You have Jerome Ford who's coming back from a – he's been banged up every week. You you have a just the shell of Kareem Hunt. I mean, he is not a functional running back any, anymore. You can't move the ball consistently on the ground. So they're, they're using their passing game. They're using their tight ends. They're using Najoku and Cooper and – Joe Flacco is not afraid to stand in the pocket and chuck it downfield, and he's done it consistently and done it well. Houston 27th against quarterbacks and schedule adjusted. I, you, you did have Case Keenum with some competent play last week for Houston where they won the football game. So I don't think that it's a guarantee that this game is a low-scoring affair. I think it could surprise a little bit in Houston. So uh, it matters for both teams. Uh, Joe Flacco has a start of the week. Look, I'm trying to pick somebody that's not – at the tippy top of this list, I'm trying to give you somebody that you are actually making a decision like Mike is. So, you know, the case for Joe Flacco is I would be happy with 202 from Joe Flacco this week if I'm trying to find somebody to step in there. You guys, Mitch Trubisky, 202 
a couple of weeks ago. Flacco's above that category in mm -hmm. a plus matchup. Pumped the brakes, man. Trubisky was a hero for our team. That's yeah. like, look, there you go. Uh, all right, earmuffs, Andy. Uh, my quarterback start I'm of the week. Taking my ears <laughs> out, and I'm, is I'm Justin leaving. Fields, your opponent's quarterback against Arizona. Since returning from the injury, the Bears... He's a good play. Yeah, he's a great play. Yeah. Uh, the Bears are playing at a blistering pace. Chicago is running 68.8 plays per game. That's the third most in the NFL over the last five games. And Fields has taken over on the ground. He is averaging 12.3 rushing attempts per game. And Arizona ranks 31st in points allowed, 26th in points allowed to quarterbacks. 40% of opponents' passing attempts result in a first down or a touchdown. That is by far the highest in the NFL. So the matchup at home in a favored game I against gave Arizona. Him Fields. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You are the reason for your death. Just go to go to Andy's cam real quick. Did you know that Justin Fields has been watching you this whole show? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Justin Fields was behind Andy the whole time. Like the boogeyman. I knew I felt something evil. Josh Josh did that, right? He sets I, this up. I don't know. They I say it's know. a coincidence, but there are no coincidences. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. My start of the week, I'm going Baker Mayfield against Jacksonville. Wow. He was the QB because I'm like you, Andy. I'm trying to find if you don't have a locked-in starter and you're scrambling. I think that Baker is a, a, a really good stream this week. I brought him up earlier. Uh, but more top 12 finishes than Dak, 7-6. to six. And Jacksonville, a pass funnel uh, defense, 29th, schedule adjusted to quarterbacks, allowing over 270 passing yards per game. That's 28. Uh, the, uh, the Baker to Mike Evans connection should be strong this week. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm taking the combo package of Raheem Mostert and Devon A. Chan against Dallas. Okay. Uh, the Dallas defense was torn to shreds last week. This is more an endorsement of A. Chan. Nobody's sitting down Raheem Mostert. But I think A. Chan is going to make his mark this week. More opportunities. Um, he's being targeted a ton. Tyreek Hill, we think he'll be back. If he's not, it's even more of an endorsement of A. Chan. And um, so I'm going to go with the, the tandem there in, against Dallas at home. Well, I'm going with a tandem as well. Two running backs that combined last week to score 2.2 2 half PPR fantasy points. They are my running backs that put me out of the playoffs. B. John Robinson and Brees Hall. They're my guys. Nice. These dudes crushed me this last week. And because I am out, they are going to Wait, be... Wait, you put both in? Yes. Oh, yeah, baby. They're They're going to be great. I know they're going to be great because that will hurt me a lot. Uh, but the truth is, they have really, really good uh, matchups. Bijan faces the Colts I defense. I can't believe you're doing this. That ranks 26th in rushing yards allowed, 28th in expected points per rush, and Atlanta plays way better at home. <clears throat> Brees faces the Commanders. We we talked about both of these on today's episode. 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to week eight. Listen to the last six <laughs> uh, running backs to face the Commanders. Um, Kyron was the running back five. Achan was the running back four. Pollard, who had been not doing so great, running back nine. Saquon, the running back one. Kenneth Walker, the running back five. Ramondre, the running back three. So they're not stopping nobody. I mean, those are good running backs, but Brees is a good running back too. So uh, Bijan and Brees will do for you what they could not do for me. Mike? I'm going with Zeke against wow, the Denver Broncos. Right. I want to give people the confidence after the I think they need the confidence. The the real stinker last week is just reminding you this is the type of, of running back that you go after. The volume. The three weeks with Ramondre out, twenty two, thirty, and seventeen opportunities, uh, sixteen receptions in those three games. The Denver defense, while they have improved since the debacle against the Miami Dolphins, it, Running backs are still doing just fine. You had Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery with 100, what, 185 rushing yards this past week. I mean, it's it's just play him. The opportunities are there, and it could be a snow game, I, which a snow game could favor Zeke uh, as you know, you've heard offensive players talk about you know the defense because they have to react. So if, when they're in the snow, it's a little harder to uh, to get your footing. I'm playing Zeke. All right, I think the theme of today's start of the week it has been like a little pat on the butt for some guys that have let you down. 
based on the Bijan Brees Hall situation, Zeke last week. I'm going to go with Stephon Diggs against the Chargers. They just gave up uh, kind of like incredible days to three Raiders wide receivers, Trey Tucker, Jacoby Myers, <laughs> and Devontae Adams. They're allowing the most passing yards in the league. And uh, Stephon Diggs has the opportunity in this one to really take advantage of the first half of this game, go out there, reestablish it, move down the field. And um, I think Stephon Diggs is a, a must start this week for those of you living on the edge of benching him. Uh, and I'm going to go with the stack with your quarterback, Amari Cooper. Why are you doing at this? At Houston. Uh, the last two games with Joe Flacco. 22 targets and 186 receiving yards. We mentioned the in increased passing volume that's going on with the Cleveland Browns right now. Cooper leads the team in targets, 25% target share versus zone coverage. Since week six, Houston ranks 27th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. They're allowing the third highest completion percentage. I don't see a, a world where you could bench Mari Cooper with Joe Flacco with the passing volume that's there right now. And I'm going with T. Higgins. He is the last man standing here for the Cincinnati Bengals with, uh, with, I'm sorry, with Jamar Chase expected to miss. We had the eruption last week, the two touchdowns, in including one of, I mean, just an absolute one of the best plays the, of the year with the stretch for the touchdown. Drake, uh, Jake Browning is playing well, and in the four games that we've seen uh, T. Higgins without Jamar Chase. The numbers are better from seven targets to nine, 62 receiving yards up to 93, 11 fantasy points up to 15 and a half. T. Higgins, I, it, I'm not scared of Pittsburgh. I'm playing him. All right, David Njoku is my start of the week, you know, with Joe Flacco, Mike. Uh, David Njoku at Houston, he has been on fire, tight end two for back-to-back -back weeks, nine-plus targets per game. You watch these games. He is just – he is their offense. Uh, along with Amari Cooper, Houston 27th against tight ends. So three. G give me David Njoku. Cleveland Browns starts of the week. That is correct. We like them this week. Okay, thanks. Um, at tight end, I am going with Evan Ingram. Uh, he is He's quietly having a historic season. I don't know if you guys realize this. He's on pace for 107 receptions right now. That would be tied for the fourth most all-time for the tight end position. He's on pace for 587 routes run. That would be top 10 all time. Schmevin is all of a sudden morphed into like a, a a steady Eddie. He's the only tight end with four plus receptions every single game. I personally think Trevor Lawrence will be back and clear protocol. But either way, I think the the you know the tight end is going to be really valuable because the matchup is perfect. Tampa Bay they're allowing the third highest yards per attempt. They are dead last against tight ends since week eight. They are a, a matchup I've been targeting. When you've got someone this involved in the offense in a matchup that that is where they are beat, you can't go away from Schmevin this week. And I'm going with the confidence play of Isaiah Likely. And you're like, of course I'm playing Isaiah Likely. But then you look at the matchup and go, oh, crap, it's the San Francisco 49ers. Well, fear not because – surprisingly over the last five weeks the team that has given up the most points over expected to the tight end position is in fact the San Francisco 49ers Trey McBride just went 10 for 102 against them he I likely seems like he is the primary read for uh for the Baltimore Ravens right now and look it's a Christmas miracle Right, you get the Monday night game you get some Isaiah likely action the would you play likely or Zay Flowers in the flex I would play likely. Based on that. I would yeah. play Isaiah likely. Okay. Uh, that is it for starts of the week. We want to thank our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. We go. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker, I opened up a can of whoop on Tyler Bass. <clears throat> oh my God. Okay. With Christmas soon on its way, I took a list and jumped on my sleigh, crossing out naughties like old St. Nick. Cole will not do. For kickers deserve a lump of poo, 
Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, to the Rams' Lucas Haversick. <laughs> it's been it's been it's been good for a couple weeks. Oh, it's good. I I really enjoyed the the lack of confidence on saying the the kicker's name. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. H- However, uh, we've got uh, I believe we've got two more boom booms. All right. I hope of all time. Maybe if, I mean I think I think maybe. I think maybe. We might have to do um, something special. Kyle did say that, that that's his favorite the only segment on the show his kids listen to, which makes sense. Oh yeah. Cuz it's a it's a there's big a deal. high um there's a big poo related kind of Yeah, I do I do question the parenting. Um, <laughs> you know, his children are very young and yeah. sometimes this this boom You're boom story t- too young for a poop joke. Oh no, but wait, I mean I'm I'm straight murdering fools. That part is at true. At this point. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, continue your tilting. Hopefully, we helped you out with the matchup breakdowns. We've got the rest of them tomorrow. We've got uh, an opportunity for me to be shamed on the show tomorrow. Papa Josh in studio as we face off for the weekend, and you want to follow along with that. I, I just remembered what it was. The shame. Oh, no. <laughs> you Did you pick it? I did, because mm. I won. Cool. And you're laughing, and that's bad. It's it's very funny. That's me. bad for me. Wait. Um well, I mean, it's Christmas. Maybe I'll get something good under the tree for the shame. No. But doesn't seem like it. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>